David Tushingham. Behind me, a desolate landscape, arid, stark, and unwelcoming. A hostile environment, a relentless heat, foreboding rock, and unfriendly dirt. But 60 million years ago, this was a lush, tropical landscape, teeming with life, crammed with exotic vegetation, with insects as big as your head, and mushrooms as big as your head, with a large hat. And ruling over it all, the most fearsome creatures the world had ever known. Who were these so-called dinosaurs? Where did they come from? Where did they go? And why? Did these immense creatures who ruled the world for millions of years end up as decorations on children's pajamas? Very good. Off you go. Tonight, we will answer these and other questions as we try to debunk the myths, strip away the illusions, and liposuck the fatty misconceptions from the thighs of history. Come on, come on! What does this have to do with me? A meteor, three times the size of Earth, is heading towards us in a collision course that will result in the extinction of all life on this planet. This just in? No, it's not. Here, beneath the ancient soil of the Serengeti, we find these enormous bones. Too large for any dog to have buried, they must be the remains of the great dinosaurs. If only these bones could talk. If they had but tongues and little lips, and you could say, hello, bone, tell us what happened. But these bones do not speak. At least, not loudly enough for us to hear. So we can only surmise what life was like 60 million years ago. It was then, during the dawn of the Jurassic period, that the world first witnessed the birth of this most terrifying creature. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's adorable. Whoa, I'm naked. Who's the mama? Where's the mama? Come here, you sweet thing. Oh, hi. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Ferocious, bloodthirsty, tyrannical beasts. Dinosaurs would as soon rip your back off as give you the time of day. Here is nature at its most savage. Creatures capable of unspeakable acts of violence. I'm gonna bite you now. <laughs> now, this bat may be a little too heavy for you. Ow! Not the mama! I should have seen that coming. No! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Fortunately, that didn't hurt a bit. It's like a dream. Somebody pinch me. I love you. <laughs> Earl, get your head out of his mouth right now. He started it. Oh, no, no, look at him talking with his mouth full again. Roy, if you bite my husband's head off. <laughs> But of all the dinosaurs, none were so feared as the Triceratops. From the Latin tri, meaning three, cera, meaning horn, and tops, meaning boss or employer. Suggestion! Want them! Now! Well, I, 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 Let me see which one of you I want to hear from first. Oh, please, no, 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 no. Not me, not me, not me, not me, not me, please, not me, 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 not
You done good. Certainly, dinosaurs were large. How large, you ask? As large as buildings. What kind of buildings, you ask? Big downtown office buildings with many levels of parking and impressive rotating restaurants on top. How did the dinosaurs get so big? Well, one theory is they ate a lot and exercised very little. So for these enormous building-sized creatures, finding sufficient food to sustain life was a constant struggle. You can have a frozen dinner, Earl. We've got a frozen dinner right here. Aren't you hungry? Your appetizer is getting cold. Yo, look here, Chunky. Just because you can't sleep doesn't mean you gotta disturb me. Uh, no. Then tuck me in. Yeah. Take me out of the refrigerator this time of night, I'll lose my space. Hey, kiss me good night. Hmm? No. And don't be put me in no vegetable bed. I wake up in the vegetable bed, I'll come out and kick your big flabby dinosaur butt all up and down the supercar. <sighs> this constant quest for food struck mortal fear in the hearts of all smaller creatures. Indeed. No sight on Earth was more terrifying than a voracious herd of hungry dinosaurs. Yay! That's lunch! Yay. Spit that out! Oh, ow. It's gone back to the restaurant. Hey, I had a hat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Thanks. You're disgusting me with the way you chew with huh? your mouth open. Huh? Huh? I'm telling you, I can see your lunch. And your lunch can see me. Nah. How you doing? Will you tell him it's disgusting? Hey, listen, listen. I hate to be critical, but I'm going to have to agree. And let me tell you, you got one major plaque buildup back here. Huh? Oh, geez. Swallow it. Spit it out. Do something. Oh. Yeah, make up your mind. Oh. What? Oh, man, do I need a shower. Earl, you hurt my feelings and embarrassed me in front of my lunch. <laughs> oh, 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 this is it, boy. Bon appetit. Oh, that, I don't want to. Eat them. I'm not even hungry. Put them in your mouth and chew. You can't make me. Hey, what's with the kid? Uh, nothing. Nothing's wrong with my kid. He's a vigil, isn't he? Hey, hey. Will you just eat him and let's go home, Robbie? No. You know, my son tried the same thing at his age. Why do I have to eat the other creatures, Dad? What's so important about the food chain? What'd you do? I ate him. I like it. I'm tough, but I'm fair. It's not an exaggeration to say that the dinosaur's life was defined by his search for food. And when food was scarce, the ravenous dinosaur was capable of anything. Come here, come here, come here. Here is an unexpected and exciting find. Bones, perhaps 70 million years old, and unlike any we found elsewhere. They're small, delicate, almost bird-like. Perhaps this is a new species. But why here, in this one spot, and not anywhere else? This find might call into question all we think we know about these amazing creatures. We'll be back.
Hello, and welcome back. Understanding the mystery of the dinosaurs is much like putting together a complex jigsaw puzzle. Many pieces are easier to assemble, others more difficult. Still others fall off the card table of science entirely and are lost under the sofa of obscurity or sucked up by the vacuum cleaner of ignorance or chewed up and made unrecognizable by the disobedient dog of time. If only Earth's distant past came in a box with a picture on the lid, then we could so easily answer all our questions. For example, scientists now speculate the dinosaur may have had two brains, one in the head, the other in the tail. If this is true, it means, in fact, that dinosaurs were twice as intelligent as we previously thought. All right. Who filled in the holes in my bowling ball? Oh, never mind. Here's some more. <laughs> ah, what is it? Well, it's obviously a suggestion box. Hello? This is Roy. What do you suggest? As you can see, I have separated all known dinosaur wisdom into three categories. Animal, vegetable, rocks. Well, what about fire? Vegetable. What about water? Water is the opposite of fire, which we have previously established as a vegetable. What's the opposite of a vegetable? Fruit. So, water is a fruit. Fruit is not a vegetable, so it has to be either an animal or a rock. We know it's not an animal. Therefore, fruit is a rock. Sometimes, on a paleontological dig such as this, we unearth an artifact so unusual, so unexplainable, an artifact that so challenges our fundamental beliefs, that we're tempted to put it back in the ground, cover it up, and dig somewhere else. Here is something we're covering up right now. A moment, please. Here are the bones of a group of dinosaurs huddled around this mysterious cube. What was this box? What made it so important, so compelling, that these gargantuan creatures sat around it until they died? We want to watch television. And now that we have cable, our TV's become a rocket sled to adventure. Buckle up, kids! Yeah. Hi, and welcome to the Hat Channel. 24 hours a day of hat news, hat features, and hat happening. And she is watching ABC, the antediluvian broadcasting company. I always felt I was an herbivore trapped in a carnivore's body. Cross Eaters, today at 4 on Reptile. expecting an important package this afternoon so whatever you do don't open it i won't woodrow <laughs> hilarious hijinks with that talking caveman this afternoon on mr ugg i am mr ugg today at four it's television they say whatever they want television is responsible for the utter degradation of our society we should write letters mom why get a life <laughs> Superficial, adolescent, male posturing and shallow, meaningless songs. Cool. This special weekend is brought to you by beer. Well, as you can see, we've got ourselves an active supercontinent this morning. In the north, violent volcanoes, including one particularly big boomer that ought to rip the Tigris-Euphrates Valley wide open. So if you've got relatives there... Kiss them goodbye. 
Once again, it's time to learn about science on Ask Mr. Lizard. Hi, kids. Hi, Mr. Lizard. Hi, Mr. Lizard. What are we going to learn today? Well, Timmy, what do you think would happen if we mix potassium nitrate, Ooh. charcoal, uh. and sulfur? Hmm. Gee, Mr. Lizard, I don't know. We're going to need another Timmy. <laughs> Say it. We're going to need another Timmy. Yeah! Gee, Mr. Lizard, what should I do with the nitroglycerin? We're, We're gonna, gonna need, need another Timmy! <laughs> well, Timmy, you just pour it into the blender there while oh. I get behind this lead shield. Okay. Uh, say say it. it! We're gonna need another Timmy! I've never seen a real jet engine before. Keep looking. Okay, but I don't think it's going to work. I mean, nothing's happening. We're going to need another Timmy. I don't want the kids to think. I want the kids to watch safe little situation comedies with time-tested, repetitive storylines. Coming this fall on ABC. He's a big city dinosaur detective who leaps through time to adopt seven interracial children. She's a ghost with seven interracial ghost children of her own. Now they're all moving to the country to become district attorneys and watch the sparks fly when mother moves in. It's all way too complicated. Wednesdays at 8. Wow! She's more of the same. <laughs> And so, we leave this artifact for future generations of paleontologists to dig up, ponder over, become frustrated with, and then bury again. Oh, thank you, Miss Honeywell. You're doing a splendid job. You're capable, efficient, very professional. Sex. For the dinosaur, Mating was an elaborate ritual. Hey, hey, look at the tail on that one. Lift it, don't drag it, sweetheart. So, Mom, when I walk, do I swing it back and forth or do I just let it drag? Nice girls don't swing. So boys like that? They're crazy for it. Mother, sweetheart. Just swing it a little until you get married. Then you can put it away. And even though young Robbie was caught with his pants down, so to speak, he was merely pursuing the female of the species. And I'm sure even you as a youth fell prey to a well-turned tail. Am I right? <laughs> well... I may have played Love's Fool once or twice. <laughs> no! Want to make more of an impression with the ladies? From time immemorial, dinosaurs have known there's only one way to a woman's heart. It's not flowers. It's not candy. Yes, it's the mating dance. <laughs> Female. To the untrained eye, they're virtually indistinguishable. But within the dinosaur family, gender roles are quickly established and rigidly maintained. Charlene, you are now my son. Thanks, Daddy. Franny, please, could you just for one evening forget you're a female so I could get romantic with you? Hey, uh, Dad... When's Mom coming back from Grandma's? When she's recuperated from you. Until then, I'm the mother. Okay. Mom, can I go to a movie tonight? 
Not a chance. Dad said I could. Uh, he really did? Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, Dad, I had a late lunch. I'll see you later, okay? Where do you think you're going? Out with the guys to mark some territory. Ah! Oh! 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 I slaved over a hot oven making a nice dinner for you kids. And now you're going to sit at this table and eat that dinner and express proper gratitude to your mother, father. Hey! Hey, hey! You don't think I'm going to let go of this table and come after you two? You're playing with fire here. Oh, I'm telling you, you're playing with fire! No, I'm playing with fire. What? <laughs> Children, like all animals, dinosaurs cherish them. Give me that. Dinosaurs cherish their young. That's mine. They look forward to the birth of each offspring with eager anticipation. What I'm trying to say is that life holds such enormous possibilities. As long as there's nothing inside that egg. In return for the love and protection they gave their young, the dinosaur parents demanded complete respect and obedience. Not the mama, 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 not the mama. You do that one more time and I'm gonna throw you across the room. Wanna give daddy a kiss? Not the mama, not the mama, not the mama, not the mama, not the mama. That is starting to bother me. Not the mother, not the mother. <sighs> no, that's not it at all. Good morning, my family who loves me. Not the mama. All right, that ends right now. I have had it up to here with this not the mama. I am not not the mama. I'm your daddy. And you only get one, Buster. And that is what you're going to call me. Daddy. Now say daddy. Say daddy. Okay. All right. All right. Say da. Da. Say di. Da. Da. Di. Di. Daddy. Daddy. Franny. Daddy. <laughs> Fred. Daddy. He loves me. Listen to him. Daddy, daddy. Da, da, daddy, da, daddy, daddy, daddy. Not the mama. And so our trek through ancient times is complete. But one question remains unanswered. What destroyed the dinosaurs? Perhaps it was their own failure to adapt to a changing planet. With their tiny, embarrassingly small brains, they couldn't have known that their environment was changing around them and that they must change with it. Will the same fate befall us? Impossible. We humans are clearly capable of learning from the past and avoiding such devastating ecological demise. Compared to the dinosaurs, we may be short, but we're not short-sighted. This is Sir David Tushingham. Good night. Hey, Professor, hmm? what do you want us to do with all this trash? Well, how do I know? We're in the desert. Just dump it somewhere.
Let's dump.